FIFA 18 focuses its efforts on the refinement of its modes and its already excellent set of controls, rather than blowing the door open with a footballing revolution. But these small additions go a long way to improving on what was already there in FIFA 17. If you tend to pick up the FIFA games to play a few matches with friends, then you might do well to stick to the last game. But if you're planning on sinking dozens of hours into this football simulation, then FIFA 18 is a significant step up from its predecessor. On the gameplay side, FIFA 18 focuses on the art of defending. While this year's version will see you score more fantastic goals on a regular basis, EA have brilliantly upped the skill gap when it comes to defending. When you're on your game, nothing will pass the immovable wall of your defense. I immediately noticed the difference in the scoreline between games where I was laser focused and others where I sat back and focused on attacking. There hasn't been a FIFA game where I've gotten so many man of the match awards for my center backs and fullbacks. This is great news for those who want to jump into the competitive esports ranked mode and take on the best players in the world. You can only blame yourself for those lapses in judgment on the defensive side. Speaking of EA's ever so popular mode, there actually isn't much to talk about besides the addition of squad battles. Players can take on community created teams to earn multiplied rewards. EA has finally addressed the single player aspect of an otherwise PvP dominated mode, and it may become a worthy distraction if the rewards stay consistently high. Elsewhere, pro clubs fanatics will be happy to get the chance to create their own club crests and kits, and also pick between one of three pre-made classes that makes it much quicker to start a match. The only other change to the gameplay comes when playing against AI opponents. EA has claimed to have featured this new gameplay innovation in past games, but it never actually materialized on the pitch. Real player motion technology has players play like they would in real life. While the developers are calling this the biggest step in gameplay in franchise history, I think it's a year too premature. This is the first time it's actually been apparent on screen, and while it's not perfect, it's most certainly capable of being as influential as something like 360 degree dribbling in FIFA 10. Career mode sees the inclusion of in-depth transfer negotiations and a cleaner UI. Players can now enter the squad hub to do just about everything you would need when it comes to managing players. You can take part in real time in negotiations with other teams when bidding for players. I was worried that I'd get tired of seeing the same repeating animations, but you can thankfully skip the dialogue and instead focus on the interesting replies and demands of players and their money hungry agents. As for the ridiculously named The Journey Hunter Returns, there's not much fun to be had. In the second season of Alex Hunter's astronomically unrealistic Hollywood-esque career, players take a trip around the world while being put in a plethora of different off-field situations, like interviews with former players. But the gameplay and mission design hasn't taken the step forward that was necessary to catch up to the likes of Madden and NBA. While FIFA 17 could be excused as the mode was in its infancy, I had hoped that its sequel would ditch the overly dramatic story of Alex Hunter and instead focus on the more interesting journey of starting as a kid in Brazil or Portugal and making it through a youth team while playing full matches. It's just boring and I'm not interested in the somber story they're trying to tell, with passing cameos and the illusion of choice through dialogue. One last thing I would be remiss not to mention, even if simply to make a plea to the developers, is the game's new penalty system. It took me far too long to figure out how to consistently score penalties, as EA has decided to take out the forward motion system featured in FIFA 17, where you could run up to the ball and wait until the last moment before slotting it in, providing some amazing, heart-beating moments. And now it's all gone. The only positive that can be gleaned is the rarity of ever actually going to penalties. FIFA 18 is a game of addition, and fans of nearly every mode will be happy with what's been added. The game's focus on the art of defending and the long-awaited addition of authentic player styles makes the play experience a joy to take part in. Career mode sees slight adjustments that makes the world of difference when combined with what was already there, and Pro Clubs is finally living up to its potential. Alex Hunter's debacle of a second season is the only fault in another fantastic entry.